Since COVID-19, this has been my life. It revolves around the computer screen. But doing so might actually be more dangerous for me than I realize. And I'm not talking about my posture or my growing waistline. I'm talking about this. In 2018, scientists from the University of Toledo published a paper claiming that they found evidence that a specific type of light emitting from our phones and computer screens, known as blue light, may be harmful. So much so that it can actually kill the cells that allow us to see, resulting in irreparable vision loss. In this episode, I want to find out if blue light deserves the bad reputation it's getting and whether I need to protect myself from it. Most Singaporeans seem to think it's necessary to protect ourselves from blue light. According to one of the world's leading distributor of prescription lenses, sales of blue light blocking lenses in Singapore have doubled over the past four years. Adeline Go bought her first pair of blue light blocking glasses two months ago. Hi, Hi. Adeline, please come in. Come in I'm meeting her to find out if the lens really made a difference in her life. What were the effects that you noticed when you started wearing these glasses? Um, I feel that my eyes are not so tired. In the past, I used to have like tired eyes, sometimes headaches and stuff like that. And I thought it's normal. But after wearing this uh, specs for the past one month, I feel there's a slight change. I don't feel so tired for my eyes wise and not so much of a headache. And yes. did you notice these effects taking place right away? Uh, no, I think it takes a few days. We've been living with computers for a long time. Mm -hmm. So why is blue light suddenly a concern now? Because um, most of us spend more screen time right now, whether it's in front of our handphone, laptop, or the TVs right now. So I think if you have a pair of blue lens glasses, it will help the eyes, um, not so much of the tired eyes. Adeline is among the growing number of people who wear special eyewear to filter the blue light coming from our digital screens. Blue light blocking lenses have spawned a multi-million dollar industry. They were first marketed in the late 1980s when computers were still a novelty. But now, we are staring at our screens more than ever. According to health tech startup Plano, since circuit breaker began in April 2020, Singaporean adults have increased their screen time by 11%, while primary and secondary students have increased their screen time by 25%. Because of this, there are blue light blocking glasses specially designed for children, with the promise that the lens will reduce the amount of blue light passing into our eyes. The costs of this premium? A $30 to $100 add-on to the spectacles you normally buy. I'm wondering if I should invest in a pair myself. Hi. Hi. Sir Ray, right? Yes, hi. Nice hi. to meet you. So I hi. fixed an appointment with optician Tan Si Rui. He started selling blue light blocking glasses since 2011. Today, I'm trying on one of these glasses to find out how they work. So this is like a blue violet light, okay? Uh, All right, and then if you can put this in front of your eyes. Okay, I'm gonna put my right eye. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna close. Yeah, my yeah, yeah. And then in front here, like. In front, this. yeah. And then you compare with and without. Do you see a difference? Hey. Ah. Okay, okay. Wait, wait, I try again. So far, the color is changing. So yeah. now I'm gonna try my left eye. I'm gonna make sure I'm not. Imagining this. Oh, wow. Wow. So that's that the difference. is extraordinary. Okay, I, I need to explain this. So what is happening is, when I put this, this lens to mm. my eye, it literally blocks out the light. So when I am using this um, blue light blocker mm. lens, mm. Um, the light is like a whiter color, it's more soft. Yeah, that's right. 
and when the lens is gone, it's mm, like you can more see of the blue, light, blue, a violet blue or a violet mm, light. And, and actually, I can even feel that the glare is different. Yeah, correct. So That's really extraordinary. Mm, yeah, so if you can put this on, this is a non-prescriptive uh, blue light blocking lenses as well. Okay. Now you can experience it with both eyes. Right, and this is with, the, wow. That is just... That is really a big difference. Yes. So by using this uh, blue light filter lenses, some of my customers or patients, they actually feed back to me that it actually does help them to cut off the glare from the screen. Blue light itself comes from computer screens and your phones, right? So basically, there is a huge chance that you might be suffering from something called digital eye strain. What can cause an eye strain? From the glare from the screen. So with the glasses itself, I'm actually blocking off the glare. Both Sirui and Adeline claim that blue light blocking glasses are really effective. But do the experts share their sentiment? We should not be translating these studies automatically to what happens in humans. These are special lenses. They are designed to protect our eyes from the harmful effects of blue light from our digital screens. This protection comes at a cost. You'd have to top up about $90 to $200 for them. Before I decide whether or not to splurge on one, I first need to know how harmful blue light really is and if the research on it causing vision loss is true. For some answers, I'm meeting with Dr. Raymond Najar, a researcher from the Singapore Eye Research Institute, who has spent the last 12 years understanding the effect of blue light on eyes. He tells me he's got some surprising facts about blue light. So this is the device we're just going to be using. And he's going to show me using this special equipment. So what we have here is the spectral radiometer. Um, it's not only a device that measures the intensity of light, but it also measures the intensity of each color of light. We see the light as white most yes, of the time, so, yes. but white light is a mixture of different uh, All right. colors. There's blue, there's green, and there's red, but also other colors in between. Mm -hmm. So with this device, we can measure and quantify the amount of uh, blue light, or the amount of red light, the amount of green light coming out of screens, of, of ceiling lights, but also uh, lights coming from the sun. What Dr. Raymond is describing is known as the visible light spectrum, which means all light that we can see, including light from our devices, and even the sun. Simply put, this is me under white fluorescent light, but this light is actually a combination of different coloured lights of different intensities, including red, yellow, orange, green, blue, indigo, violet, also known as the colours of the rainbow. So what we can do is actually, we have a sensor right here, mm. and that sensor will actually detect the amount of light coming from screens. So shall we switch off the lights? Let's go. So all I have to do is press the scan button. Yes. Mobile phone. Just going to put that there. Okay. And then I click scan. There we go. Yeah. In a matter of minutes, yeah. we have the results. Okay, lights. This is the light coming from the screen of the phone. So if we now switch to look at how um, the screen, the laptop screen looks like, ah, here um, we are. it actually looks like a typical LED screen. Mm -hmm. So if we measure any LED here, it actually has a almost similar shape, the wave, the, the spectrum looks quite similar. Mm -hmm. So doctor, I'm very concerned because I'm on my tablet or my laptop, like probably about 12 hours a day. So what does this mean? Like These intensities are quite low because if you compare these intensities to what we get outdoors from the sun, uh, outdoors we get at least 100 times more light in terms of blue light. I thought my worry was blue light from devices, but if the sun is the biggest source of blue light, there's no escaping it. So now I'm highly aware that there is blue light 
all around us. Should I not be running off to buy my own blue light blocking glasses? So basically you can tell that we're exposed to blue light every day, right? From our screens, from, from indoor lighting, from the sun. Um, so the first question is actually harmful for you before you go and, and, and buy anything to protect yourself from it. Some studies have shown in animal studies, experimental studies, that if you expose animals to very intense blue light, and this is more violet blue light, you can damage the retina, most of them nocturnal animal models, rat, mice, um, or in petri dishes. So you remove cells from the retina, you put them in petri dishes, you expose them to bright light, but these are cells in a petri dish without any protection from light without any lens and coming from animals we cannot translate it directly to humans so in humans uh, there's no proof that blue light is harmful to the eyes uh -huh. so there's really no conclusive evidence from okay. studies on this then we actually cannot advise people to go buy blue blocking glasses but could blue light blocking glasses help reduce or prevent digital eye strain so when it comes to digital eye strain, we're talking dry eyes, we're talking, uh, you know, fatigue, eye fatigue. Uh, um, there's no evidence that's actually coming from blue light, coming from your screens. It's actually more related to the way we use our devices than from the blue light coming from our devices. When we spend time, hours, in front of our devices, uh, first, we start blinking less. On average, we blink 15 to 18 times uh, per minute. When we're taken by our devices, we blink half of the time and our muscles in our eyes are trying to keep the eye in focus on what you're looking at. Uh, the muscles around the eye get tired and this is predominantly what leads to digital eye strain. We actually don't need to reduce uh, the amount of blue light that we're getting indoors or from our screen in our lives per se, if we're talking about light. It's really a matter of knowing when to take breaks. We need to take a break basically every 20 minutes for 20 seconds and look away at something that is at six meters. That's what we call 20-20-20 rule, 20 feet is six meters. So can blue light cause retina damage? Highly unlikely. Whether it's our LED screens or the sun, such intensities of light are still safe enough to leave my eyes exposed as I go about my routine. And as for the eye strain we experience from too much screen time, well, I've learned that blue light isn't the culprit after all. So, are these blue light blocking glasses worth my money? I think not. But while blue light doesn't affect my eyes, there's another part of our body which is said to be suffering the effects of blue light. So should I be splurging on skincare products that promise to protect us from blue light? So roughly, you could spend about $400 a month. Yeah, Just about that. I've been looking into claims about the dangers of blue light that have been circulating the news since 2019. So far, I've found that claims by the eyewear industry suggesting blue light is harmful to my eyes to be untrue. But there is another industry where blue light blocking products have become popular. The skincare industry. Moisturizers, mists, anti aging creams. I've discovered a variety of skincare products promising to protect my skin from blue light and costing anywhere from $33 to a whopping $250. With so many different types of anti blue light skincare products out there, I want to know what I should be using to protect my skin from blue light. So I'm meeting beauty blogger Rowanna Tan. She's been an avid user of anti blue light products for two years, and she's going to let me try out her routine. Hi, Rowanna. Hi, Shana. Oh, wow, look at all these products here. So how would I use these products in a skincare routine? I use uh, serums, moisturizers, as well as sunscreen to block out blue light. So the first one I use usually is a serum. Other than being anti-blue light, mm -hmm. it actually is an anti-aging serum. It's really spreading really easily. Yeah, it does. So what comes after serum? 
Moisturiser naturally. So a moisturiser is largely a cream that helps protect your skin against moisture loss. So it helps to lock in moisture and hydrate your skin. But a lot of products in the market have got the added um, anti-blue light technology. Right. Yeah, so this is one cream that has that function. So you can okay. just dab okay. a little and try. So you can feel that texture is a little bit thicker than the serum. I think that Rowena is the elixir to my youth. <laughs> okay, so this is the moisturiser. Yep, that's right. Um, what's the next step in your routine? So for me, other than protecting my face, I also have eye creams to protect the, my eye area because the skin area under our eyes is very, very delicate and it's very thin. We are always using our mobile devices and we're always on screen, so we're always exposing our eye area to blue light. So we need to protect that area with eye creams. Mm. Yeah. So this works just as a, a protective layer. And yeah, so this is a lighter texture as compared to the moisturizer, right? Yes, it's much lighter. Mm. So after the eyes um, and the moisturizer, we will do a sunscreen. Okay, so this sunscreen has an added blue light function. Mm -hmm. So it not only protects our skin against the harmful UVA and UVB rays, it also protects uh, against blue light. How much have you already spent on all these products? To be honest, it can be a few hundred dollars. A month? Uh, yeah, probably a month or maybe every two months. So what's been your experience trying these different kinds of products? I do think that they're worth it because um, you know our skin is a very important asset because you know when someone looks at you they look at your face naturally first right so skincare to me is very very important because we want to still look good even when we are through our 30s 40s so I think for someone who really wants to protect their skin and want to look good um, this skincare is definitely worth the investment 15 years of marriage you can't tell me why ah. As somebody who performs on stage, my face is an important asset. I understand Rowena's concerns about protecting our skin, but I've been down this path before. I want to know if blue light is really dangerous for my skin, so much so that I would need these products. So I'm bringing some of these products to the National Skin Centre, where I'm meeting Dr. Eugene Tan. As a dermatologist, he's been following the hype surrounding blue light for eight years. I want to know if blue light is as dangerous to my skin as these skincare products seem to suggest. Blue light exerts two main effects on our skin. Firstly, skin aging, because the blue light actually generates reactive oxygen species, which are free radicals that cause oxidative damage to the DNA in the skin cells. In the long term, it can lead to a wrinkling of the skin. And secondly, blue light actually causes pigmentation by stimulating the skin pigment cells. And interestingly, it has been shown that blue light induced pigmentation actually causes darker, more sustained, as well as longer lasting pigmentation compared to UV induced pigmentation. Typically, the effects may show up itself over months to years. It's not short term because these effects occur very slowly and insidiously over a long period of time. So I've been looking at many of these blue light blocking skincare products and I'm just wondering, do they actually work? So these uh, creams here, they are you know, serums, eye creams, moisturizers. They contain antioxidants and as the name implies, they neutralize oxidative damage generated by blue light that cause DNA damage to the cells. So these anti-blue light creams are specially formulated to contain vitamins and additional ingredients like green tea extract in order to protect the skin from blue light. But if the biggest source of blue light is the sun, can I just rely on sunscreen for protection? Sunscreens have physical blocking agents. We should be looking for titanium dioxide as well as zinc oxide and also iron oxide, which is found in tinted sunscreens. What is tinted sunscreen? Tinted sunscreens have a brown tint or brown hue so when you apply on your face, it may leave, leave a, a slightly brownish uh, colour. And this is an example of a tinted sunscreen. You can compare it to a, a white non-tinted sunscreen, so you can see there's obvious uh, colour difference. I'll try the tinted one now, mm -hmm. just to see. So this is the best one that you're saying? Uh, yes, the one in that... terms of uh, blue light protection. Okay. Mm. This actually dissolves in quite well. But within the 
non-tinted sunscreens. The sunscreen here will be better in terms of blue light protection because it is more white and it's thicker. Whereas uh, this sunscreen here is lighter, probably melts into your face type. So you have less blue light protection. Whereas uh, the other sunscreen, if you can try it, uh, Shada, it's probably more white oh, yeah. and leaves this uh, whitish hue on the skin, so it may not look very pleasant. But in actual fact, actually, it's a better blue light blocker. You're right, it's it's much thicker, and I can actually yeah. see that it's still shimmering, and there's, yeah. a, there's a thicker coat left on my That's hand, right. making it look more white. That's right. So, are these products the solution? Even when you apply sunscreen, it doesn't block blue light 100%, it's just partially blocking. And the antioxidants are not perfect as well. There'll still be some damage from active oxygen species from blue light. So personally, I prefer a holistic approach in combating blue light. First of all, in terms of diets, we should uh, take a healthy antioxidant-rich diet, rich in fresh fruits and vegetables. In fact, it has been shown that oral intake of antioxidants actually trumps the topical application. So diet definitely plays a very important role. Then we should also reduce our exposure to blue light. So in terms of sun protection measures, seeking shade, avoid being close to bright light sources. So it depends on the context that the person is in. For example, if a person always spends his time outdoors under a lot, a lot of sun exposure, then definitely there will be a lot of harmful effects uh, from blue light. Whereas a person who is uh, mostly indoors, you know, at home, you know, in the office, suddenly go, goes out in the sun, the level of blue light exposure is actually very low. So I think a holistic approach is uh, more important than just using creams alone. So no amount of sunscreens or anti-blue light creams will be able to block blue light entirely. But they can be part of a lifestyle change to reduce the effects of blue light on my skin. I, for one, will be using these creams on a regular basis. When deciding which products to buy, we navigate a labyrinth of promises and half-truths, especially when it comes to these blue light products. So do your research, make sure the benefits promised are real and tangible so that you find the best product to suit your needs.